Hi, and welcome to the weekly wrap up for this Friday, July 19th, 2024. Thanks for tuning in. Please smash the like and subscribe button and personalize it so that you can receive all these updates so you don't miss a beat on all the latest updates and happenings. Uh, this week's shows, we had Andy Sheckman, uh, we had Ian from Perium, and of course, David Mahoney, which we've just recorded and will be out sometime, most likely this weekend. Next week, we just have Lynette Zhang, where we'll find out all of her updates on the financial front. Here are the headlines for the week. Stop and Shop announced that it will be closing its doors on 32 of its underperforming grocery stores across five New England states by the end of the year. Here's the breakdown. Five stores in Connecticut, eight stores in Massachusetts, 10 in New Jersey, seven in New York, and two in Rhode Island. California continues its workers' crisis as workers are now demanding $30 an hour as minimum wage. LA IST cut the size of its workforce by laying off seven staffers this week, the organization's top leader said. The layoffs came after 21 other employees agreed to accept voluntary buyouts last month. Together, the cuts result in an approximate 17% staff reduction, 17. Some staff who took a buyout have already departed, while others remain through the end of July. Banks have closed 539 branches in six months. This includes Wells Fargo, Chase among those cutting the most. And here's the breakdown of said banks. 90 branches for Bank of America, 73 for U.S. Bank, 62 for Wells Fargo, 53 for Chase, 52 for TD Bank, 31 for Wood Forest National Bank, 37 for PNC, 29 for Citizens Bank, 16 for Key Bank, 12 for Capital One, and five for Citibank, and then others that comprise of a total of 79 banks. This is sources closures reported to OCC. M&S are now set to open at least 10 new convenience stores this year with further plans to revamp an existing 50 of its smaller shops. This means that total shoppers will now see 60 uh, new refurbished M&S stores up and down the country. The rollout includes two new stores, which recently opened in Ealing Broadway and Liverpool Street Station, one in Belfast, Ireland, due to open in October. The rollout includes two new stores, which recently opened in Ealing, Broadway, and Liverpool. Again, Reuters uh, with Solar Edge Technologies said on Monday it would lay off approximately 400 employees, 200 of which are in Israel, as it works to restore profitability and ensure financial stability. This action is taking uh, across all departments, including a reduction in headcount and discretionary spending, the renewable energy firm said in a letter to its employees. Other cuts and layoffs include Salesforce cutting 300 jobs, once again, SolarEdge, which is 8.5% of its workforce. Intuit cuts 10% of the workforce. Total tech layoffs attribute year-to-date 106,690 cuts so far. U.S. temp workers have seen negative growth for 20 straight months, the longest streak since the 2008 financial crisis. Senator Bob Menendez was convicted, finally, Tuesday of taking bribes from three businessmen who showered him and his wife with cash, gold bars, Bitcoin, and Mercedes-Benz, an extravagant bounty for his help in securing deals for foreign officials trying to derail several, several criminal investigations within New Jersey. Warner Brothers Discovery has entered a new round of layoffs. This time, fewer than 1,000 staffers will see their job cuts, a person with knowledge tells uh, IndieWire. About 1% of those or fewer than 10 employees will be let go from the company's core streaming platform, Max. Other impacted divisions include finance, business affairs, and production, with finance receiving the worst of the cuts. The fragile state of the film and television business uh, continues with another set of layoffs hitting the industry. Deadline understands that Warner Brothers Discovery is making more cuts this week as part of another round of cost-cutting measures. British luxury group Burberry named former Michael Kors boss Joshua Shulman as its new CEO on Monday, July 15th, axing Jonathan Axelrod after two years as it warned of profits and scrap on the dividend, Francis McGuire reports. German fashion house Hugo Boss on Monday cuts its sales guidance for the year to a range between 4.20 billion euros which equates to 4.58 billion US to 4.35 billion euros over weakening global consumer demand, especially in markets like China and the UK, Julian Saderwhite reports. Microsoft joins a number of tech companies in walking back DEI commitments, AKA woke, that were made in the wake of Black Lives Matter protests in 2020. This includes Google, Meta, and Zoom. It's unclear how many employees were laid off as Microsoft did not immediately uh, respond to a request for that, according to the Daily Mail. 
Uh, Fortescue reports said Wednesday it will cut 700 employees as part of restructuring in order to simplify its structure, remove duplication, and deliver cost efficiencies in metals and energy business. In other news, Las Vegas is losing an iconic piece of its history. The Mirage Hotel and Casino is closing its doors after 34 years. A popular Melbourne restaurant has closed its good doors for good after more than three decades in business. Mayoko Japanese Cuisine and Tepayaki, located in South Bank, took to social media Sunday to announce the closure and thanked its patrons for their support. Here's the latest on gold, silver, and Brent crude as of this broadcast. Gold is up at 2471.20, silver $30.44, Brent crude at $84.64. Here are the notable deaths and resignations. Ellen DeGeneres abruptly cancels shows and says, quote, this is the last time you will see me. Longtime New York Times restaurant critic Pete Wells steps down amidst health concerns. A council leader has resigned just before he was due to face a vote of no confidence over the local authorities' finances. The leader of Cheshire's East Council, Sam Cochran, said he had to, quote, take responsibility after a report highlighted bankruptcy fears. He announced he would be standing down at a full council meeting. For the second time this week, a member has resigned from the North Carolina House of Representatives. Representative Ashton Wheeler Clemens, Democrat from Guilford, is leaving for a position in the UNC system. The specific date to leave was not given pending her replacement. She was a candidate for re-election this fall. Shannon Doherty, star of Beverly Hills 9021 and Charm, dies at 53. She was a devoted daughter, sister, aunt, and friend. Retired NFL player Jacoby Jones, best known for helping the Baltimore Ravens win the 2013 Super Bowl, has died at just the age of 40. In Columbia, South Carolina, Eddie Dunning, who painted the South Carolina Gamecock logo at midfield in williams Bryce Stadiums for over 40 seasons, since died, officials said he was 69. South Carolina's athletic department announced his death on Wednesday. Dunning's obituary said he died on July 13th at Columbia Hospital. No cause of death was provided. Pat Williams, the basketball executive who helped bring the NBA's Orlando Magic to Florida died on Wednesday. The team announced in a statement he was 84 years old. His cause of death was reportedly complications from viral pneumonia. A prominent real estate, Miami real estate titan accused of poisoning his estranged wife was found dead by suicide at his home during an FBI raid amid allegations that he had concocted a murder for hire plot to kill her. Sergio Pino, 67, was found dead in an upstairs bedroom by an FBI SWAT team that swarmed the developer's swanky multi-million dollar home in a gated Coral Gables community on Tuesday. Subash Dandekar, the visionary behind Camlin, passed away on July 15th in Mumbai at the age of 86. Dandekar was an innovator who transformed Camlin into a beloved brand known and renowned for its high quality stationery and educational products. It was found in almost every household in India. The businessman passed away 7 a.m. on Monday. His passing marks the end of an era for an iconic brand that has left an indelible mark on countless childhoods across the country. Hayim Benjamin, 55, landscape art, architect and avid cyclist, dies this week. Time Weiner, an English-American actor, uh, producer, writer, and director, and voiceover actor, has passed away at age 77. Weiner was especially known for his numerous roles in the iconic anime series like Cowboy Bebop, Digimon, Ghost in the Shell, and many more. The sudden death of fitness icon Richard Simmons is under investigation by medical examiners, according to the LA Police Department. No foul play is suspected, but the police case will not be enclosed, closed until a formal cause of death is established by the medical examiner's investigation, which could take several weeks as lab tests are conducted. He was 76. Joe Bryant, dad of NBA legend Kobe Bryant, dies from massive stroke at the age of 69. At least 23 people were killed and 13 injured in Peru on Tuesday after a bus, crash, a bus crashed while traveling through a mountainous area, the country's interior minister said on social media. Claudia Frank Williams, the daughter of legendary baseball Red Sox icon legend Ted Williams, has died. She was 52. Tom Kraft, <clears throat> excuse me, the German DJ, and producer born Tomas Bruckner, whose 2002 single Loneliness became an international club staple, died on Monday. His family announced on social media, we will forever carry you in our hearts and love you until we are united again, the family said. No cause of death was given. He was 49 years old. Legendary Swiss extreme skiing pioneer Sylvain Sadan has passed away. 
Le Matin, a Swiss newspaper reports he died from a heart attack at 87. In Port Oregon, Naomi Pomeroy, an award-winning chef who had helped put Oregon, Portland, Oregon, specifically on the map as a culinary destination, has drowned in an inner tubing accident. Authority said she was 49 years old. Dr. Ruth, Ruth Westheimer, the diminutive sex therapist who became pop icon, media star, and best-selling author through her frank talk about the once taboo sex bedroom topics has died. She was 96. Westheimer died on Friday in her home in New York City, surrounded by her family, according to publicist and friend Pierre Lehoux. Lizzie Musi, street outlaw star, has passed away at the age of 33. Jim Morris, vice president of, vice chair rather, of Pacer Sports and Entertainment and one of central Indiana's most impactful civic leaders has died at the age of 81. And lastly, filmmaker Norman Jewison, who directed such varied projects as Moonstruck, Filler on the Roof, In the Heat of the Night has died. Specific details have not been released, but the Hollywood Reporter says that Jewison died over the weekend at his home. He was 97. Okay, and now to the commentary section. Uh, folks, just really briefly, I want to get this point across to all of you collectively. I'm going to remind you that the wealth transfer is vast and eight levels deep. We can't talk about currencies on every single show. So certain shows like we do with Greg Manorino or Andy Sheckman are primarily metals related or, or other things like cryptos. We do specific currency shows like we do with Nick Vaniamen, we do with David Mahoney, where we wholly focus primarily on that. Um, so you know, if, if God has just called you into the currencies, that's fine, but um, don't take it away from people who are trying to take advantage of the other wealth transfer by bringing in questions that don't relate to topics we're talking about, such as gold and silver. And remember, ultimately, it's not all about you. It's about the community. We have a kingdom responsibility to reach out to the entire community and not just one segment of it. So if you're looking for just currencies, this probably isn't the channel for you because again, we're hitting the whole of things. Please just consider what we're saying. You don't need to give pushback or negativity. If you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say anything at all. It's that simple for, for all of us concerned. Here's the easiest way to look at it. When you go to a buffet, you take the things you like. If you like steak, shrimp, ribs, pizza, whatever, you grab that. If you don't like Brussels sprouts, you don't grab it and make a public scene about it. You just don't uh, you just don't take partake of it. You leave it for someone else. Treat this exactly like that. You wouldn't cause a scene of histrionics in a public store. Please don't do that here. Simple as that. You wouldn't go to a hardware store and ask them what burger specials they have because it doesn't fit. You know, again, certain shows are for certain things. We will do currency shows, but that's not all we're going to do. We are going to go as vast and deep as God calls us for the wealth transfer in all of its components. So please respect that going forward. That does it for this week's weekly wrap up. As we gave you the breaking news about J.D. Vance as President Trump's VP pick this week, if anything urgent comes out, we will let you know accordingly. Otherwise, have a great and safe weekend. Enjoy the David Mahoney show, which is about currencies. And we will see you on next week's show with Lynette and the wrap up. Take care and God bless.